<laughs> and that's uh, Nudie Vems in back of me. Next to him is Shamsuddin Ali. Next to him is Jeremiah Shabazz. Next to him is Sam Christian. Next to him is John 38 Rock, John Clark. Next to him is my D, Dow Chua. This was the original and more. I'm just saying, you know, it's a, but this is the nucleus of the original Philadelphia Mile. So this is the nucleus and more brothers. I, in the presence of the Brethren of the Honorable Assembly and Council, do hereby promise and swear by all that I consider to be good, decent, respectable, pure, and or sacred, yea, even by the blood that sustains my children, that I will never divulge any pertinent information, or secrets that pertain to the family, and I shall ever be on guard against those who would, and report any such violations to members of higher authority, to see that the violations are properly acted upon. I swear by my own life that I will not communicate any information to any law enforcement official or anyone else in any way, that which could endanger the safety or freedom of another member. What's going on YouTube? In this mini documentary, we will be covering true events that happened in the past. We don't glorify any criminal activity on this channel. If you're new to this channel, we cover the same material as the following television shows such as American Gangsta, Mobsters, and FBI Files. If that type of material is not for you, feel free to exit. When you see Samuel Christian, you go the other way. When you ask about Samuel Christian, you'll hear he was the founder and leader of the Philly Black Mafia. Now, some things might got mixed up. I know Eugene Bo Baines was the chairman. I know Sam Christian was the head of security of Temple 12. He was the chief enforcer. Now, he was a different type of enforcer that would make people think he was the boss. He did a lot of the Black Mafia's heavy contract work. To the youngins that was around during the time, Sam Christian was super fly and bad Leroy Jones rolled into one. This guy was different. He was the only enforcer with his own turf. He was the only enforcer that didn't have to answer to a lieutenant. Welcome to Members Only. Let's get into it. Now, before they were known as the Black Mafia, they were just some dudes in the hood trying to get a dollar in the 1960s when gangsters actually had money. Samuel Christian and his homies would ride around looking for crap games to stick up and would hope to get lucky to get the drop on a poker game once in a while. For example, in October of 1964, he robbed a card game and when one of the players tried to protect the pot, he left the building carrying a bullet. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Sam Christian would take his mask off so the remaining card dealers could identify him. He would later be arrested for the robbery, but none of the witnesses would step up. He was already known for teaching people to mind their business. He already had a rap sheet as he was getting cuffed since a kid. Growing up, he would make his presence known in different sections of Philly. He was a knockout artist, and he wouldn't hesitate to check your pockets. Many would call him a bully. Well, that's an insult. Bullies prey on the weak. He had well-known gangsters giving it up without him telling or having to say a word. You would hate to see his face at a dice game. Whatever you saw him, you just knew something was about to happen. It got to a point where people would just give up something just to be left alone during the rest of his visit. When you saw them, you saw Ron Harvey and Russell Mead. It wasn't your lucky day if you got their attention. You didn't want to be caught staring for long or make any eye contact. The Black Mafia was something that the media named them. They didn't name themselves like Big Meech and them. But they belonged to something. Nation of Islam and Temple 12. They served as bodyguards to names like Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and Elijah Muhammad. Whatever Sam Christian and the fellas decided to do away from the temple was on them. It was all about do for self. Getting a 9 to 5 and barely making it was for the birds. It was about making a way for yourself. See, there's a big difference between the 1967 Black Mafia compared to the one in the 70s. In the mid and late 1960s, it was all about extorting bars, stores, pimps, drug dealers. Guys had to pay tribute of at least $200 to $300 a week. 
the black mafia in the 70s were more ruthless and they were getting into the narcotics a little bit more heavy. The money came from the streets. The power came from the nation of Islam. It was all about keeping Temple 2 happy, which was the headquarters located in Chicago. The messenger would have $40,000 delivered on Founders Day from Temple 12 in straight cash. Majority of the cash coming from the mob's lucrative rackets. Now you got some guys calling themselves the mob because they sell drugs. No, the real mob have gambling rackets, extortion, alcohol, all types of trade. And they kept Sam Christian with a nice bankroll in his pocket. Four to five thousand of walk around money. Brand new Lincolns and Cadillacs. A wife or multiple wives with multiple mistresses with different home addresses. He could lay his head. The younger guys would see his lifestyle and would want parts, so they would commit crash dummy acts for him. Sam Christian and the Black Mafia would hold meetings, up to 50 to 60 members in bars, grocery store back rooms, and meeting halls every Wednesday. Now, we talk about the different type of meetings they would have. The executive meetings, some meetings where guys would be blindfolded while taken to the meeting location. Now, when it comes to the information that's inside, books and newspaper articles, it came directly from informants. So if you like hearing these stories, you got to thank the people that y'all call rats. And because if it wasn't for them, y'all wouldn't be getting any of this information. So if the informants never exist, these book and documentaries wouldn't exist. Now, of course, the black mob had structure. You had the chairman. He's at the top of the chain. Under him, you had the lieutenants. Now, ranking under the lieutenants was the enforcer. And you might ask, what Sam Christian responsibilities were as an enforcer? Well, most enforcers were on the lieutenant's payroll, but Sam Christian wasn't assigned to a lieutenant. But every other enforcer had to be a close friend to a lieutenant. The enforcer is the most obvious member of the Black Mafia because he's supposed to be seen. People are supposed to fear him. He's also a bookkeeper. His job is to know how much work is on the street, who has it on credit consignment. He's a debt collector. When one of the corner boys gets pinched or die, his job was to get a replacement. Out of all the brothers, he was the one that had the pistol on him. He had local cops scared of him because they knew that blue uniform had to come off at the end of the day. September of 1967, Sam Christian would get into a fight with multiple men at a voting registration drive on 18th and Cambria in North Philly. With him being outnumbered, he would tell them he'll be back. Now, if Sam Christian tell you he'll be back, believe him. And don't be around to even see. He came back spraying bullets into the crowd, hitting bystanders and everything, hitting his target in the hip. By that time, he was going by the name Solomon Bay. May 20th, 1969, he was charged along with Ronald Harvey for battery and assault on a police officer. Neither men were convicted. Now, you only get away with things like that, having money and the best attorneys and ties. 1971 in Lansdowne, PA, two men knocked at an apartment posing as police officers. When they entered, the person which was Harry Petros wasn't home. They kept whoever in the apartment hostage as they communicated with a lookout in a phone booth. When Harry Petros arrived, they robbed him for two grand. When the cops arrived, the victims were handcuffed. Now law enforcement traced the cuffs back to Sam Christian. He purchased the cuffs at a pawn shop. June 20th, 1971, a guy ran into the police station hollering about four men with guns hanging around his home. When the police arrived to his house, the men ran as one fired five shots at the police officers but missed. Three of the four men were Bo Bangs, Ron Harvey, and Sam Christian. The guy that went to the police station was an alleged numbers writer. They were there to extort him. Now, if I had to guess who fired those shots at the police, it has to be between Ron Harvey and Sam Christian. Now, during that same year, Sam Christian and Russell Mead attempted to rob a record store. Some say it was actually a drug dealer they was trying to extort in New York. Somehow the police showed up and a shootout took place, hitting one of the officers. The two were captured, but Sam Christian was able to get his bail reduced, thanks to money and a good attorney. And of course, he skipped bail. Every time one of those brothers bailed out, they just moved on with life, acting like nothing happened. You couldn't pay them to show up to court. They ain't have no time for that. <laughs> but one day at or around 4 a.m., two guys and a woman entered a bar in AC armed. The three stuck up the joint. Now, I heard another story saying it was about seven or eight people, which probably was true. But anyway, they tied everyone up and robbed them for almost $14,000 worth of cash and jewelry. The cops arrived while the robbery was going on and a shootout took place. 
the police chased the two luxury sedans back towards Philly. Now, one of the vehicles flipped as all the suspects still got away. The vehicle that flipped belonged to Sam Christian. Now, around this time, Sam Christian and the brothers started to get more reckless, having an untouchable attitude towards law enforcement, well, towards anything, period. They would do things that would start to bug the mosque out of Chicago. The Hanafi Muslim massacre led by Ronald Harvey early 1973 was a carried away act involving newborn babies. Now, if y'all want to hear more about that story, I did do a video on Ronald Harvey, so tune into that. I will pin it at the end of this video. But Jeremiah Shabazz would start to get questioned if he knew what the brothers were doing outside of the temple. He basically said he didn't have anything to do with that. It's the police job. Now, there was a hustler named Fat Tyrone Palmer, a.k.a. Mr. Millionaire. He was actually the narcotics connection between New York and Philadelphia. His connections was to the Philly Black Mafia and Frank Matthews. Now, he was putting together a big deal and he allegedly went to the Black Mafia for financial backing. Now, Palmer was putting a big play together. A meeting took place to discuss a big coke connection involving PA, of course, Chicago, Rhode Island, and Baton Rouge. The deal was successful. Palmer gave a large supply to one of his guys named P.I. Smith to put the work out in the streets of Philly. Now, Smith claimed to be burnt shortly after, and Palmer wasn't hearing that. That was a $250,000 loss. Like, who's taking that L? Smith was found in a parking lot with three bullets in his head. But that didn't take care of the problem. That didn't bring the money back, and Palmer had to come up with the money fast. Time was ticking, and when the time was up, during one of the Black Mafia meetings, Sam Christian stood up with the words of, I'll take care of Palmer. Four other members stood up backing him. Easter night, 1972, at Club Harlem. Palmer was caught off guard by a surprise guest. An unmasked Sam Christian had a few words before the scuffle began, followed by shots fired into Palmer's body at point-blank range and shells catching Palmer's bodyguard before getting a chance to reach for his holster. Now, that shooting left two things, a message and five dead, with several pistols left at the scene. Sam Christian and his boys walked out calmly and headed into the bar across the street. Now, during the investigation, his name was brought up and several witnesses gave a statement. With him committing a such act without a mask and a good amount of witnesses tells you that he was there to send a message. That untouchable mentality wasn't going anywhere. He was already one of the AC for robbery. Now, he's a wanted man for murder. Now, and I already did a piece on the Major Coxon story, so I'm going to speed through this. But I'm going to pin the story at the end of this video. Yeah, because all these stories I tell has some type of connections. Now, and if you're not already, become an Upper Echelon member to see what celebrity that was inside Coxon's house during the murder and played a small role in the setup. But anyway, a large shipment was stolen in New York. So, one of the five families reached out to Philly. Angelo Bruno had to sit down with Coxon offering them 200 k if he get the shipment back for them. Now, Coxon agreed. Coxon reaches out to the Philly Black Mafia, and he promised them 100 k of the 200 k if they could have retrieved it. Now, the Black Mob supposedly located the men. They didn't retrieve the product. They just left two bodies behind. So there's two bodies and no product. That was far from what they agreed on. So Coxon wasn't getting paid. And even though they didn't complete the assignment, the brothers still wanted their money. Now, Coxon didn't pay them, which I kind of agree on and disagree at the same time. If I was in Coxon's position, I would have just arranged a meeting to see if I could just pay them 50000 due to them not holding up on their end. If not, I would have just took that loss. It's less expensive than hiding and moving your family all around the world, ducking them dudes. Now, let me know in the comments, what would you do in that situation? June 8th, 1973, Coxon was tied hand, foot, and shot three times in the back of the head while kneeling by his waterbed. His companion, her 17-year-old daughter, and her 14-year-old son were bound and shot. The mother and son was the only two that survived, while the other son managed to escape. Now, on the streets of Philly, Police officers were told, if you see Sam Christian, you draw your weapon. If he even think you're coming to arrest him, he's shooting it out. 
After the Coxon murder, Sam Christian went into hiding into Moss out in Detroit and Chicago. He became the 321st person to be added to the FBI's most wanted list. Ron Harvey was the 320th. Chicago was ready to send guys out to Temple 12 to clean house. I mean, seven public murders that year was ridiculous. Seven days after making the most wanted list, Sam Christian was arrested in Detroit and transported to New York for the robbery and shooting of the NYPD officer in 1971. Now, for those murders he was wanted for, those charges were dropped due to no witnesses. When he was arrested, he put a hit out on an FBI agent that tracked him down from Philly, but no harm was done. By 1974, the majority of the most feared members were behind bars. When Sam Christian was paroled in 1988, he wasn't allowed back in Philly because he caught that case in NY. When he came home, he reached out to Aaron Jones and Craig Haynes for money. Now, if he wasn't so aggressive, Aaron Jones would have showed love, but that wasn't the case. But when Sam Christian came home, they gave him two females for him to enjoy as a welcome home gift. The young girls told him to relax and gave him a hit of crack, and he was turned out ever since. He was hit with two parole violations, with the second one being in January 2002. He was burnt out on drugs by then. March 6, 2016, he passed away. He was one of the very few left from that organization. Now, everyone had their own story of the guy, whether he donated to some type of charity or he went upside their head. Love him or hate him, he did what he had to do. Those were the glory days when the word brother actually meant something. Those brothers rolled with each other to the end. No snitching, stood up the police, protect each other, for better and worse, it'll never be anything like it. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, show love in the comments. Thanks for watching. And oh yeah, for the people that constantly commented on of my videos saying my videos too short, all oh, the videos need to be longer, I wish they would be longer, here y'all go. So I'm gonna be watching y'all to see what y'all do with this video. So show love, man. I appreciate all of y'all, I'm out.